there were a lot of golf goal games and I think because it's still the first half of the season, uh, still fairly early doors, you really see which teams that it comes down to composure at the end of a game and you really see that that is what takes the win. Um, probably more so than shooting accuracy or intercepts or anything like that. It literally comes down to who can keep their heads cool in attack oh, definitely. Um, for the longest. Um, because I saw that with the Misfits Marbury B game. Yeah, That was a good game. Um, but against Castletown Pink, and that's quite a, like a rivalry that people oh, have, yeah. have come to know. Um, and it was just that Marbury, it just went a bit too messy for them. Yeah. And a few of their, it, I, watching them, I thought it was their last pass into the circle just wasn't on and they just couldn't get it right. No matter how many times they passed it in, the defence were just preying on it. Yeah. And that comes down to, I think, tiredness and being able to think, okay, this pass isn't working. What do we need to do differently? But yeah. when it's in the dying minutes of the fourth quarter and you're knackered, it's very difficult to take that moment and mentally think, yeah. I need to change my game. So, you know, that's something that I think every team can work towards. Oh, definitely. And I think as well, it's not just about keeping what you're doing controlled as well it's about making sure you're giving 100 percent in defense as well so going for all the turnovers pressures on the ball pressures on your players down the court and it is exhausting you know to try and keep up with somebody for what is it 12 minutes each quarter is exhausting um so it it does it comes down to can you keep doing what you're doing and do it consistently but also can you match what your play is doing as well you're asking a lot of people yeah absolutely and you're so right with the defense because i think when you do see people get tired people either sort of dro start to drop off their player or even if they're with their player they don't put their arms up to yeah. mark the ball and they're such small things but you can see that if a defender just gets in front of their player and puts their arms up mm. that pressure in itself could lead to the next player on your team getting the intercept oh, yeah, yeah exactly so those tiny tiny little things go a very very long way you just have to make sure that you graft for the full 12 yeah. minutes you know every quarter something we always say um to all of the simcox girls is who wants to win the match more will win the match um, and if you go on to the court and you don't want to win that game well then the other team will win because they'll get the turnovers because they put that pressure on more than you do because they want to win um, but ultimately that's what it comes down to do you want to win or are you just there for a jolly Absolutely, I like that. Um, okay, let's look ahead to week five of the Newfield Senior Netball League. Um, what can we expect this week, do you think? Uh, there aren't as many uh, close games this week, but looking down at the, the fixtures, we've got Balabee versus Connections. Uh, based on how the games have been playing out the past few weeks, they seem to be quite equally matched teams. Mm -hmm. Um Based yeah, that on should be quite a good one. Who do you, who would you put your money on? I'd put my money on connections. Um, just going on, you know the the depth they've got across that club at the moment. Um, so connections played Simcox Blue this weekend and had a lot of people playing up. Um, but they, that didn't phase them. Um, so I think regardless of who takes that court, Route One connections have a lot of depth across all of their squads. So I think they might just edge across there. Um, Simcox Blue have Tomb Raiders which which could be really close um, again it comes down to who can hold their own and who wants to win the game you know more uh, last season Tomb Raiders put up a massive fight against Simcox every time that they went out and played against each other that's the thing with Tomb Raiders that I, I would say people consistently People's consistent feedback about Tomb Raiders is that they fight in every game. Oh, yeah. They are hustlers and they work hard. for. They really, really graft for the ball. And even if they're not not in the league um, by a considerable amount, they will just keep working and working and working at you for the entire game. So it's really good to watch. Yeah, uh, a great team. And netball is a game of four quarters and Tomb Raiders are probably prime example of somebody that plays that game it, regardless of what the scoreline was the quarter before they're going on there trying to win that the next 12 minutes um great netball um division one tomb raiders long and humphrey tomb raiders so that's their second team versus route one turbos i think is going to be a close game looking at where they're sat in the league at the moment um they're both sat on the same amount of points and um, it's goal difference it's telling the two teams apart at the moment so could be really close and um, likewise young farmers a versus castletown pink and um, two teams that have naturally kind of 
had a rivalry because they've been in that division together for the past few years. Um, I think maybe Young Farmers will edge out on top. But again, Castletown Pink beat, you know, top of the division winners um, last week. So who knows? Who knows? Um, Division two, Castletown Navy versus Simcox Green. I think this will be a really close one between the two, actually. Um, Green's kind of showing they can hold their own on Sunday. Um, Likewise, Castletown Navy doing that the week before. Um, Unsure who's going to win that one. I'm obviously rooting for for Simcox Green, but Castletown might just pip them to the post on that one. Um, And then Ramsey Black versus Young Farmers B. Again, teams that are really set apart really on goal difference, so it could be a really close one between those two. Um, And then in Division 3, I don't anticipate any of the games going goal for goal, but for some ones to watch are maybe Ballady versus Thompson 4. Ballady showing on Sunday that they can put on a class performance of netball. Um, They've got some youth mixed in with experience in there and some players coming back um, this season for another... uh, netball debut and um, so joe hicks really adding some experience into that shooting circle holding her own composed confident a great player to watch really she really is and her and Re- rebecca hands work really well together mm. they know when to hold they know when to move they know when to get get out of each other's way and and like you say it is it was kind of like watching a master class of netball um really really strong in the circle um and I think the only thing against them is height for rebounds. I'd say that's literally the only things because yeah. they they're not static shooters that take a shot and then just watch it watch it. They do fight for the rebound, yeah. but because a lot of the players are taller, I would say that's their only downfall. Yeah. Um, but similar with Claire Crow as keeper yeah. in the other in the other circle, she brings a lot of experience and it makes a huge difference. It really does. Um, but I was going to say, it, Joe is prime example that you don't have to be six foot to be a good shooter. Um, you know, she was she well and truly kept Baller in the game last week from from sinking all those shots. So massive credit to her, and it's good to see her back playing full time. Um, other games we've got Manx Gems Tanzanites versus Simcox Silvers. Um, Silvers kind of sat at the top of the division at the moment, um, but they're both two um, youthful teams, um, some experience in the Tanzanite sides. But Silver's hopefully going out to show um, why they're wanting to win the division this year. Um, and another game is Route 1 Volts versus Simcox White. I think Volts will win this game, um, but White's do, on a why high. Why do you think that? Well, uh, I think they're maybe the, uh, the stronger team, um, but Simcox Silver's are on a high after winning last week. So you don't know. Everybody goes onto the court wanting to win, obviously. Nobody wants to lose a game of netball. Um but we'll see. What do you do if you're going into a game knowing, as as harsh as it might sound, knowing that you're going to get smashed? Yeah, so if, you, so for example, people that go up against Ballaret um, or Simcox Red, naturally, they're probably going to be a game that you lose unless you are one of those teams. Um, but I think you go on there fighting for half points and also wanting to give that team a bit of competition, you don't want it to be an easy win for them. Um, so again, it's a game of four quarters, and regardless of the score line, um, you want to go in there making sure that you're trying to level out each quarter each time, which is insanely difficult, and it's hard to keep yourself motivated um, if the score line's not going your way. Um, you know, in the past, I found it really difficult when I've played those games when you're not winning, trying to keep yourself focused, but you've just got to think, I'm here, I'm going to get half points. Half points is my goal here because ultimately it one one point could be what sets you as third or fourth in the league. So, Absolutely. And I think in terms of self-motivation as well, it's good to go on thinking, okay, in this quarter, I'm going to attempt to mark my player out of the game. In this quarter, I'm going to attempt to get one intercept. Oh, yeah. In this quarter, I'm going to attempt... Um, like a bounce pass into the circle, you know, and those just simple but mm-hmm. like one focus point per, per quarter yeah. can really keep you motivated in those games, I, I think. think. Yeah, no, I think those games are good ones to set yourself an individual target and a team target as well. Um, so I know in the past, um, in quarter times, I've been thinking to myself, what can I do differently? Okay, maybe this time it's following my shots, so I'm going to make sure any missed shots I'm getting 90% of my rebounds or as a team okay let's try and get it down so that it's four four balls from a center to goal without any intercepts at all and if you go on with a target 
it's easy to forget about the scoreline because you're focusing on something else instead. 